Welcome to And So The Mind Reels podcast video version. Yes, that's right, video version. So if you're used to listening to this podcast just with your ears, you can actually see it with your eyes if you so choose. The reason is I want to show you some things that are best represented visually. Now, the reason for that is in the last podcast, I was addressing opening your mind. So I'm opening my mind a little bit to opening up the visual aspect of this podcast. And I want to show you some things because I was talking about um, films. Uh, if you're used to just, you know, straight American films, Disney, Universal, Fox, Paramount, whatever, and the American films, and you're happy with them, that maybe if you jumped over the pond, if you will, and explored Italy or France or Germany, you may see films that are unlike anything you've seen before, plot-wise, story-wise, structure-wise, how they're shot, and that would open your mind a bit. So I like to imagine maybe the two or three people that actually listen to my podcast might ask me, hey, you know, I heard that podcast about the the foreign films. What 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 films would you recommend I watch? So, hey, I went down into my collection and I grabbed a handful and thought, well, these are good. I'm kind of uh, the spectrum a little bit in so far as uh, directors and they're, they're pretty much like stock things I would recommend to anybody watching and in no particular order because I can't really see. Uh, I'm just going to start grabbing some stuff and holding it up and say a little bit something about it. Ah, here we go. Um, Jean-Luc Godard, you want to start like right out of the box being kind of wacky and, and just scratching your head when the film's over Alphaville Alphaville is kind of a detective story, a noir black and white shot, very bizarre. But if you want to get into, um, Jean-Luc Godard, now that's not Jean-Luc Picard. He's not captain of the enterprise. This is Jean-Luc Godard, who is a French filmmaker, kind of of the new wave. He did a breathless you may be familiar with or not familiar with. I recommend you check that one out too. This is a real um a real interesting film. Alphaville. A detective set in the future, sci-fi, black and white. Um it's uh definitely worth checking out. What well, well what about it is worth checking out, Lee? Well, because of the structure. Godard uses a structure unlike anybody I've ever seen in so far as narrative. He jumps around a lot. He has subtitles. He has interesting little things he will inject in there. And as I said, when, once once this is over, you'll either be scratching your head or, or like I was, I said, I got I to watch that again. What, what just happened? Uh, Alphaville by Godard. Um, grab something else here. Okay. Uh, Werner Herzog, Aguirre, The Wrath of God. This is one of his early works. I believe this Aguirre is a um, an actual person. Klaus Kinski plays him. Klaus is one of my favorite, was one of my favorite uh, German actors at the time. There's amazing scenes, things that happen that Herzog gets from his actors and gets from his crew. Uh, the horse on the on the barge and the the uh, the monkeys toward the end. Do you, I know I've intrigued you. What about the horse? What about the monkeys? Well, A Gear of the Wrath of God by Herzog. Check it out, and you'll you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Yojimbo by um, Kurosawa. Kurosawa, a Japanese film director. This originally, I believe this is the one I was talking about in a podcast from a really long time ago. It was based on a Dashiell Hammett American um, detective novelist. He did the Thin Man series and things like that. This was called Red Harvest, and Yojimbo was a version of this that eventually became um, Fistful of Dollars. Sergio Leone uh, remade this film into a spaghetti western. So it's interesting. It was a uh, 1930s detective novel turned into a samurai film by Kurosawa that was eventually turned into a a spaghetti western by... um, Sergio Leone, and then I think later on it was actually turned back into a detective 1930s movie with Bruce Willis called Last Man Standing, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go to Germany now, shall we? Okay, Fritz Lang, M. I don't know if you can see that. It's a very dark, it's a very dark movie. 
Uh, the subject matter uh, has to do with a uh, a, a child murderer. Um, Peter Lorre, I think, is his first foray into cinema. Uh, Fritz Lang uh, got him and l allowed him to explore the the canvas with his eyes and his face and his emotions is just Peter Lorre is just amazing expression. I don't think they ever worked together again because uh, a little behind the scenes, Peter Lorre was a, a kind of a, a sensitive. He's a small, he's a, he's a small guy. Okay. And uh, Fritz Lang really demanded a lot from his crew and from his actors, especially. And I think threw Peter Lorre around quite a bit and injured him. And he said, I'm not, I'm not working with that guy again. Uh, let's go on to Kurosawa again, Seven Samurai. Seven Samurai, of course, was again remade as a Western um, called The Magnificent Seven. So the plot, if you're familiar with that, this is the source material. Kurosawa, amazing, amazing film. The way it's shot, the, uh, um, the, the, the cast, uh, I highly, 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 highly recommend Seven Samurai. Check this out. Um, you'll get into, if you, if you enjoy this, you'll enjoy a lot of Kurosawa's, Kurosawa's work. Uh, Fellini, eight and a half. Okay. This is basically semi autobiographical. I think of Fellini and his, uh, his work as a director. A lot of things may have been reflected about him in this. It's basically the plot as a director, Marcello Mastriani playing a director who's making a film who's kind of stuck. He's in creative limbo. He can't quite finish the film because he doesn't really know what it's about. He, you know, maybe doesn't know what he's doing anymore. And, uh, he's trying to figure out this, this, this film. So it's about filmmaking. It's about, um, you know, being stuck, being, uh, creatively dried up and looking for some sort of inspiration. And, uh, it's beautifully shot. Oh my gosh, this, this movie is amazing black and white subtitles. Of course, all of these are going to have subtitles. So you're going to have to read and, and watch right? but eight and a half, I'd highly recommend. And then Fellini, another, I believe autobiographical thing, Amacord. This is a wonderful, wonderful movie. I think this was the first Fellini I ever saw when I was really young and I got it from Blockbuster, I think. And I, you know, kind of illegally made a dub of it because I loved it so much. I had my own VHS copy I finally got, you know, the, um, the big, the big version. Uh, but it's, it's about a, a kid growing up. Uh, it's, it's, you know, typical Fellini. If, you, if you're not familiar with Fellini, if you've heard the term Fellini-esque, you, this will basically introduce you to, to things that, I mean, there's a scene in here with a, a peacock in the snow, you know, I'll put it right up there with the, the monkeys on the boat and the uh, Herzog thing, but I'd highly recommend Amicord. Anything by Fellini, early Fellini, I'd I'd highly recommend. So you'll you'll your mind will really be expanded by this guy. And I think those are uh, those are all of those that I that I picked out. If you're interested in more, I have I have I have a box. I have a box of films that I can um, recommend to you. So I'd recommend any of those Fellini. Uh, Truffaut is one a French director. He did 400 Blows. I'd recommend Godard, as I say, his early stuff, uh, Breathless, uh, Alphaville, anything early by uh, Godard. I'd highly recommend because he was finding his style and um, and uh, fleshing out what it, what it is and how he wanted to shoot things. And it's really amazing to watch the later stuff. Kind of gets he gets really political and kind of. I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of his later stuff so much. Um, Kurosawa, those those films, uh, the, any of the the samurai. If you're really into swordplay, uh, Kurosawa's samurai stuff just amazing, just beautifully shot, beautifully acted. Uh, Herzog, uh, Herzog is a great uh, German director. The first thing I ever saw was um, a film called Even Dwarfs Start as Small. I went to a, a cinema and saw that and just was like, what is going on here? I was, I was young and I was in college and really getting into foreign films. And that was the first one. I was just like, what the crap am I watching? And I just couldn't get enough of that. I I've since rented it two or three times uh, to watch it again. And I'm still going, what the crap is happening? 
So any of those films, if you have any questions, you can, you can contact me. I can make recommendations for you. And hopefully these will um, broaden your mind, open your mind up, and make you a more creative person. All right? Enough for now. And so the mind reels. Sometimes it does, you know, right? I think right up in here somewhere where the real part is. Yeah, real. Yeah.